Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR, as always. Uh, today, I want to talk about some common mistakes and rabbit holes that I see people go down in their LS swaps, and, and we'll run through those, and hopefully you can avoid some of these pitfalls in your project. Now, I'll say that my way is not the only way, and as long as you're willingly making a decision that's informed, I don't care, right? Uh, headers on my six liter. I bought them because they look cool. They don't make any more power. I could have cut up factory truck manifolds and made them work. Uh, I could have used, you know, Trailblazer SS manifolds. I could have done other things, but I bought headers because they look cool. Um, so if you know that you're buying that sheet metal intake just because it looks cool and you're going to give up power everywhere below 8,000 RPM, then I don't care. But if you don't know, if you go down the rabbit hole of going into, you know, whatever Richard Holdner said is best, um, you need to be aware that Richard is presenting information and he does it without bias and he does it without inflection. Um, so you need to be aware of what you're getting into. So I'm going, I personally, real life JR is gonna pick that LS up, get it on that stand over there and get it ready to go into this Dodge. But video jr is going to go to the computer screen and we're going to talk about some of the different rabbit holes i've seen people going down lately so stay tuned All right, so to start off, first of all, if you see yourself in here, I blurred everybody's name out. It's not personal, it's not an attack. Don't be a wiener, don't take it personally. Um, it's just things to learn from. The first thing that I see people doing constantly is getting lost in what's best. And this refers back to my earlier comment about Richard. Um, Richard Holdner has done a bunch of tests. He's shown that the Trailblazer SS intake manifold is the best, but so this poor bastard saw that or heard that or somebody told him that. So he bought a brand new intake manifold for $176. He bought brand new rails for, I think they're like $180. He bought brand new injectors. He bought this and that and the other thing. And none of this, it, it still doesn't fit on his truck and run. And little does he know that best is like 12 or 15 horsepower to the tires. So know what you're getting into when you go looking for the best thing the bet a, a bird in the hands worth two in the bush right like do you want to go do burnouts right now or do you want to wait forever for the best intake um yeah the best cam people always well the summit 8706 versus the summit 8709 it, it it doesn't matter, man. Whichever one's cheaper. Like if they're if one cam has 226 degrees of duration and the other one has 230 degrees of duration, you're never gonna be able to tell me the difference between the two of them when we're out driving around, ever. If a cam requires a converter, a, a 3,000 RPM converter, every other cam that requires a 3,000 RPM converter is gonna run just like it on the street. Uh, the best engine to start with. Oh, should I find a Gen 4? Should I find you know a rec port head? Should I find an aluminum block? I, you should find the most complete one you can that's in your price range, right? And only you know what your price range is. Not everything, like I said, I bought headers for my truck because I wanted to. A lot of the stuff in my Forerunner is not out of the junkyard. It actually is the best stuff that I could afford. Um, you have to just be realistic though. The best intake, my goodness. You know, you just saw that, that um, example there. The proper turbo sizing, people trip over themselves. I don't want any lag. You've never had anything turbocharged, bitch. You don't know what the fuck lag is. You're talking about proper turbo sizing. How many ways do you think there are to put a turbo onto an LS engine? There's a reason why everybody's running around with GT45s and 7875s. And you can go ahead and pay $700 for a billet gen 45, 7875, because the compressor map looks slightly better at 3000 RP. Get the fuck out, man. Just go do burnouts. People, and people get overwhelmed with this stuff. And that's the problem. 
And when you endlessly, endlessly collect parts and endlessly, endlessly search for the best thing ever, my plans have changed. That's what you wind up doing. My loss is your gain. These are search terms that I use to find poor bastards selling their shit that I can go buy. Um, ignore the price here. I don't care. You will notice that LS Swaps and Solutions is just a constant source of these examples for me. So I do appreciate the group for existing for that. Um, let's move on. Number two, opening up functioning engines while you're at it. I have no idea why people are doing this. You, you know what these two vehicles right here have in common? They ran to the scene of the crash, okay? They work. If this is your donor, whether you're pulling it at the junkyard or you're buying it complete from Copart or from somebody's backyard who's one step ahead of JD Buy Rider, whatever, I don't care. This thing runs. If you know it runs, are you strongly suspect that it ran? Why are you messing with it? Don't take these things apart any further than you have to. If you decide you want a cam, then you have to do a cam and spring, so you should take it apart that far. But there's no reason for you to be poking around in the mains. Um, I have a lot of pictures of this. Th this guy here, this poor bass, Alice Swaps and Solutions, he went on eBay and bought rockers, third broken rocker. Why did he buy rockers in the first place? Trunnion upgrades. I spin my junk to 7200 RPM because it's funny. It doesn't even make power there. I just think it sounds cool. There's no trunnions in my rockers. More people screw up rockers putting trunnions in them than I've ever seen like actual stock rockers fail. Uh, this guy, I know this This went to the machine shop because it's a number eight uh, sharpied onto this rod here. He messed with it. Why did he mess with it? Now his rods are spun. This guy, my crankshaft bearings on a motor after machine shop replaced them. Only runtime was blah, blah, blah. I just saw another one. Maybe I have it here in this next slide. Um, I don't. I just saw another one, though. I, I, I'm, you know, machine shop turned my crank, and I, I'm at the upper end of the tolerance. Well, yeah, because the machine shop turned your crank. They're more likely to screw it up. And there was nothing wrong with your crank. Why did you take it down and have it turned? Uh, this question came up twice in the space of maybe a month. All every LS engine I've ever taken apart has these little swirly marks on the push rods. I flip them upside down, keep right on rolling. A bunch of other people commented that, and that's kind of what you should look for. I mean, some people confirmation bias is real, so some people they want to hear, "Oh yeah, you should replace that while you're at it." So they're not going to listen to anything else. Like the goofball I saw that has to have a $500 snap-on digital angle gauge to tell him when he's hit 90 degrees because he can't just make an L with his finger and his thumb. Um, but these are fine. When you have seven, eight, nine people in the comments section saying, yeah, I've done this, yeah, I've done this, yeah, I've done this, it's probably okay. It doesn't hurt to ask, but if you already have a foregone conclusion, there's no point in asking. Number three and final, I want to keep this video a little bit short. Uh, buying incomplete engines. I don't know why people continue to do this. I didn't blur Matt's name out here because Matt's a dickhead. Um, this is a Gen 4 5.3 engine. He says motor. Um, not going to use it. 862 heads, needs lifters. So he took, this came with 243 heads on it, which are more desirable, even if I don't think, they're not better, but they're more desirable. So he dropped the compression ratio here. Or he upped the compression ratio a little bit, but he put crappier heads on it with smaller valves in the sense that they're worth less money. He took the good part. He wants, ignore the price, but he's got the lifters out. There's no coils. It's missing valve springs. Uh, it looks like he threw the intake up on it. I don't know. Just don't buy this. Don't buy this. Ignore the price and just don't buy something that somebody's messed with because there's hillbillies wrecking Silverados in every state everywhere. Look at this. There really are. I don't want to hear, oh, they're not by me. Yes, they are. Get up off your couch. Go look. Uh, this one's off my local marketplace here. It's a six liter. I'm not going to buy this because I have no idea what this guy did when he took it apart. I have no idea why he took it apart. I have no idea what he messed with. It's missing the intake and all the injectors. This is an $800 engine. If you go to the pull apart, 
and you buy an intake and a throttle body and injectors, you're gonna be into this for another two or 300 bucks before you even can tell if it runs or not. Which means most likely you're gonna tear it all down while you're at it and wind up selling the whole thing in boxes for 600 bucks next year when you need rent money. Um, just try to avoid these pitfalls. Try to think critically. Try to look around and find consensus online. I, I know it's hard. You got a lot of opinions coming at you from a lot of different directions. But, uh, you know, don't go down these rabbit holes if you don't have to. I want to see everybody out there doing burnouts and having fun in their swap. And, and I, I really, I take some small joy from things like this. Especially when these people are snobs. You know, like, oh, well, you know, the poors are into car ownership again. I bought this fine Camaro transmission. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I laugh a little bit when, you know, this guy sells his shit. But I don't really want this to happen to you guys. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below what you think the biggest mistake people make is. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.